you know, we had not only WCW, but ECW. Now, when I was a kid, there were two main wrestling shows, wrestling organizations, WWF and WCW. And it wasn't until I was in grade nine that I heard about ECW. No, which was completely different from the two organizations. So in 2001, they both got together. They both got together and they decided that they were going to go against WWF. So, here, you know, it's just one of those things where you didn't know what was going to happen. And I figured WWF was going to win. But there was always that what if. I remember when uh, Taz debuted. And, you know, before that, or even. And not knowing that these guys. Oh, and of course, Rhino. And I didn't find out till years later. But I was watching a taped episode of ECW that my older brother lent me. And Lado was actually a part of ECW. So, there, you know, it's just one of those things. And of course, Benoit and Eddie Guerrero were not to be seen. They were not in the storyline when the alliance happened. So that was a shame as well. And then having Goldberg come in later that year. And now I think that Goldberg, they, they didn't really need him. Because, what what for? I don't think that would have worked as well. But, there was just that moment where you didn't know what was going to happen on Raw after Survivor Series. And when you saw Monday Night Raw, and you saw Vince turn face for one night, that was awesome. Because then you had Ric Flair come out. And that's what started the Flair-McMahon feud. And it was just, you know, to relive that, you know. That Don't understand awesome. is this whole invasion angle thing. And, you know, I'm back, back in the day, and I and now I've said this in my last video that I will post after this. I will post a link. The, you know, the whole invasion angle was uh, interesting. I think a lot of it has to do with, uh, you know, Vince McMahon buying out WCW. I didn't know that he bought out ECW, obviously. I, yeah. And then, so if the Alliance won, I'm not sure what would have happened. Obviously, that I knew, I should have known they wouldn't have won. But being the angel was at the time. I mean, even then, they can be a real super fan of that kind of stuff. And I took it even more seriously back then. And I was upset that my man Stone Cold Steve Austin joined the Alliance. It was bad enough he joined the McMahon, Vince McMahon. But this was a step too far. But in saying that, WWF won. And I don't know why, because in a year later, like after WrestleMania 18, which was at the Sky Dome in Toronto, after that, you know, the, it slowly changed into WWE. So in that sense, and you still had wrestlers like Rob Van Dam and Lance Storm and all those guys, some of them anyways. And then of course the whole failure of bringing back ECW, which I thought was a shame. And well, I mean, I thought it was fucking dumb. But, that is what it is now. I'm Killer Kyle. Welcome to another episode of Wheels of Fury.
Daniels is very Matt and Kyle just done the Bad series 97. Now we're going to go ahead a few years to a event that Matt mentioned in the last video is controversial. Yeah, you see it's controversial, but definitely could have been a lot different. Had there been some people involved that really should have been involved, we'll get more into that when we get to a certain match. But we're going to talk about now Safari Series 2001. Yes. The infamous invasion angle, and yeah. Yes, I know I talked about it in my Survivor Series series with you right. a couple years ago, if you will. Yeah. And kind of funny because we did a lot of reviews in 2001 this year. Yeah. And I thought, yeah, well, I can't wait to do this with you. And here we are. Boom. So, yes, this was interesting because you look at, and again, you know, WCW, I understood. But in ECW, it went down the toilet as well, unfortunately. Yeah. It wasn't as bad as WCW. No. But they just ran out of money, so... Basically. You had Paul Heyman do commentary with JR, and of course, their history goes back to WCW. Yep. But this was interesting. You had the build-up, which was magnificent. Yes. And I can't believe I'm saying this, because that's a stupid saying, but... Chef's Bellissimo! Kiss. Yeah. Chef's kiss. Anyways, yeah. this was fun. Yeah, it was uh, overall a really good show. Like, at that time, I, for some reason, was scared of Paul Heyman. <laughs> but, not sure why. Anyways, it was pretty cool to see, you know, Stephanie and Shane McMahon share against their father. Now, I understand a lot of people that say, well, you know, this was the shits because you didn't have a lot of the WCW talent that they could have had. And, you know, that's the thing because, I mean, it was out of business. You could have had Bischoff. Yeah. That would have been cool. Mm -hmm. You could have had Larry Zabisco. Or Steve Mongo McMichael. Mm -hmm. But instead, we go with Shane and Stephanie. And it's like McMahon's against a McMahon. It's like kind of. It doesn't really make sense, in my opinion. But. Well, to me, it kind of goes back to, what was it, 99? And you have that one match. Linda, Shane. Oh, WrestleMania 2000. And they, uh, you know, Big Show represent one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was WrestleMania 2000. Yeah. Or uh, WrestleMania 16, if you will. But it's weird just to see that because it is supposed to be Alliance versus WWF. Yeah. But, you know, regardless, I mean, this was the time where... You had guys like the Dudley Boys and Diamond Dallas Page and Raven and Taz yep. already in the company. Even Rhino. Rhino, yeah. So, yeah, in a way, it made sense to have those guys. And not to mention wrestlers that came in like 99. You had yeah. Paul White, Chris Jericho, and the Radicals. So... In a way, it kind of made sense, and I understand where people are coming from. Where's Sting? Where's Bill Goldberg? Where's the NWO? And unfortunately, we had to wait for another fucking few months. Yeah. It just kind of... It doesn't make sense in a way, because you could have had that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And... You have Bruce Pritchard going, oh, well, you know... Just because we had WCW and we purchased them doesn't mean we couldn't get everybody. Well, fuck you. Yes, you could have. But they sat at home and they collected paycheck after paycheck. 
And it's like, if I were them, I would have been fucking working. I mean, look at the matches you could have had. Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Hulk Hogan. Or Hollywood Hogan. Or Goldberg versus Steve Austin. Or Sting versus The Undertaker. The list goes on, kind of. I mean, there's a lot that you could have done. And, yeah, you got some of that a few months after this, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it just would have made more sense. Yeah. Like, and it's no disrespect to Canyon or DDP or Billy Kidman, but those guys were kind of like, I don't know, just not as popular. Yeah. But this was an interesting show. And I mean, we'll get more into it. So, yeah. Let's do the damn thing. Yeah. Affects my muscles and stick up my chest. So now we're going to start with the European Championship. We've got Christian versus Al Snow. Yeah, that was a very interesting rivalry. Yeah. And, you know, you look at Christian, who at the time didn't, well, like, he won the Intercontinental Championship, obviously. It was interesting to see him as the European Champion and having him as the Champion of Europe, as he called himself. Yeah, exactly. But, anyhow, this was a great match, too. Yeah, and I mean, we talked about Al Snow in previous videos, but this is where he actually thrived at his own, I guess. Yeah. But this was a good match, too, and Christian went over, but you know Al Snow got his, too. I mean, he, I believe that he started off in the match. Right. But, yeah, this, like... At this point, you know, it was Edge and Christian on their own. Christian was trying to find his footing as a sales competitor. He was doing fairly well for himself, but he didn't really seem to have that stride of, like, consistency. And, of course, you have him. Throwing these temper tantrums like a two-year-old yeah, in the middle of the ring. After when he lost the match, he's like, "Okay, you're just embarrassing yourself at this point." Yeah, somebody proud of this ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This was a good feud. I mean, that's the thing. Jason has always had that entertainment aspect. Oh yeah, and the wrestling is is awesome as well. But he always knew how to entertain the crowd. Oh, yeah. Whether he was a face or a heel. And in fact, he was much better as a heel. Yeah. I mean, when he was in the bird, it was pretty cool as well. Yeah. But anyways. Yeah, this was a good match. Yeah. I think Christian won? Yes. Today I won't be wearing a vest of the dragon the Blackpool Brawler, William Regal, versus the Japanese Bossa, Yoshihiro Tajiri. Hell yeah. This was interesting because you look at, so Tajiri came in as William Regal's butler, if you were, well, assistant. Yeah. So, this was cool as well. My brother was a huge fan of his when he was in ECW. So it's very cool to have him come into WWE and, you know, a legend in himself because, oh, yeah. you know, starting in Japan in 1995 and then going over to ECW, going to WWF, having a stellar career there, he had some championships as well. And yeah, so you have a guy that was a good wrestler in WCW versus a guy who was very popular in ECW. Yes. Which kind of was like, okay, 
it's where why Roman Regal isn't on Team WCW, ECW, but whatever. Yeah, uh, this was weird. But anyways, yeah. Actually, no. I think William Regal was on the WCW. Well, whatever. Or in any case, William Regal won with the Regal stretch. Yes. But I believe Tajiri also hit the miss or tried to, anyways. You know, it, it's just one of those things where it was like, you had the tarantula versus Regal stretch. Yes, the translator gets the regal stretch, like, okay, whoever gets the first move wins. Yeah, so, but I mean, this was a good match, and I believe they had many more, but it was an interesting story on a side note, because a while ago he had on story time, I don't know if you saw that episode, William Regal talking about how he would have ride alongs with Yoshihiro Tajiri and they hated well he hated him I don't know if Tajiri ever hated but apparently Tajiri was afraid of uh, spam apparently yeah. yeah so William had tried to fuck with him and put spam everywhere yeah just a little side note but anyways yeah there's uh, there's a couple wrestlers with some unusual fears. We got Tajiri afraid of spam. Fucking Undertaker afraid of cucumbers. Uh, what? Anyway. So we have Canada versus Canada. You got. Test as the Intercontinental Champion, the WWF Intercontinental Champion versus Edge, yeah. the WCW United States Champion. Right. And you know it's funny because I, I would never have guessed that months later, or even a year later, you would have the WWE, even to this day, have the United States Championship themselves. Yeah. But this was a really good match, too. And we talked about Test, I believe, last week. And just the height on him. Oh, yeah. This guy was one massive motherfucker. And, I mean, there was, a, like, two points in the match where he actually hit the spear on Edge himself. Right. But, yeah, this was really good. They took the action to the outside. And, yeah. Basically, Edge picked up the win, retaining the Intercontinental title, and winning the WCW United States title. Right. So, I'm not even sure what happened right after that. I just know that, I mean, they never unified them, so... Yeah. I think once WWE got the WCW... United States Championship, they basically made it their own. Yeah. And then, of course, later on in the inaugural Battle Royal, Test would win. Now, it's funny, too, because Test was a part of the Alliance. But fortunately, he never really was a member of WCW, but still, I know, because he's a heel, let's put him on... The WCW ECW Alliance team. Yeah, that's de facto. So, anyways, yeah, he won the Battle Royal a couple matches later, but yeah. So now we're going on to a tag team match, Steel Cage tag team match. You've got the Dudley Boys. Versus the Hardys? Or, yeah, the Hardy Boys. Although they're called boys, but they're actually grown ass men. But yeah, this match was very good. You know, you got two teams. And you know, we talked about Edge and Christian, of course. Christian did a match with Al Snow. Edge did a match with Test. But like, those three teams, of course, had some 
insane, insane matches, TLC wise. And yeah, then you got uh, Matt and Jeff and Devon and Bubba in a tag team match, steel cage match. It's like, ooh, knowing what these guys can already do, put them in a cage, it's like, ooh, things are gonna get ugly. I think the only thing that really pisses me off is that it was, you can pin or you can go over the cage. Right. You know, climb the cage. What's weird about this match is it was a tag team match. So it just seems like, you know, if one member goes over the cage, then you're left three people. And so you could do whatever the hell you want. That would depend. They had two on one attack. Yeah, but to, to me, I don't know if it was a fair advantage, in my opinion, but mm -hmm. Matt go over outside, and then you have Jeff alone with the Dudley boys. Yeah. So, what do you think's gonna happen? Yeah. The Dudley boys pin in the win. They're the WWF and WCW's A-Team champions. Yeah. So... That was a good match. That wasn't great. Yeah, I mean, you know, both the Dudleys and the Hardys and, you know, like I said, Ed and Christian. Those three teams always had great matches against each other. I think maybe, like, Matt and Jeff had some steel gauge matches previously, yeah. but I think kind of the cage was out of the element of the Dudleys. I mean, they did what they could yeah. in the match, but I mean, you know, could it have been better? Yes. Yeah, no, I agree. Like I said, it wasn't the greatest, but it was a good match. Solid match. Pack challenge, I'll call it. You had yes, it was. Trish, uh, Victoria, Molly, Jacqueline, and Lita? Yes. And then this, there's a mystery person, and I think it was Ivory. Yeah. So, yeah. For the Women's Championship. Yeah. But, yeah, this was a good match, too. And all these wrestlers. I mean, I think this might have been Jacqueline's last WWF match, if not one of her last matches. Yeah. I know that she defected other wrestling promotions, and... Even a stint in TNA when it came out, and yeah, this was a good match. But I mean, Trish won and has the title, and it was pretty cool actually. Yeah. And I mean, I know Avery did have the title a few months prior, and so that was cool. My Molly Holly. I don't know if she won the women's championship. She might have. I think she did. Yeah. yeah, actually, you know, now that I think about it, I think she did. But, anyways, nonetheless, this was a pretty good match, too. Dragon pants, I'm like Dragon pants. I'm go on to the Big Kahuna. Winner take all match. Team WWF versus Team Alliance. Mm -hmm. On one side, you got. Booker T, you got Shane, you got Austin, you got Kurt Angle, and you got... Rob Van Dam. Yeah, Rob Van Dam. And on Team WWF, you had the WCW Heavyweight Champion, Rock. You had the WWF Champion, Kurt Angle. You had Kane. You had Undertaker. And you had Big Show. Now, the thing about this is, okay... You've got Booker T, who was a WCW guy. You got Rob Van Dam, who was a WCW guy. You got Shane as the owner of a WCW at this point. And you got Kurt Angle and Austin, who both defected to the Alliance. And it's like. <laughs> You had so many big name players that you could have had in this match, 
The leg man said, well, they do set other house at home earning a paycheck. That they, you know, they were owed by WCW, you know. WCW was out of business. I mean, think about the endless opportunities and people you can hire in this match. Okay, you have Booker T and RVD. You could have had Sting. You could have had... Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, you could have had Goldberg, you could have had Hugh Morris, maybe. You could have had, hell, even people that were already on the Alliance could have fucking had Taz in there. You could have had Rhino in there. You could have had Raven, Raven in there. Tommy Dreamer, Sandman, Chuck, Sabu, Chuck Palumbo, Chuck Palumbo, Canyon, Canyon. Fucking DDP, anybody. Not, not to say that the team was bad, as far as the Alliance is concerned. It just could have been so much better. Not to mention, you look at Team WWF. You have the Brothers of Fucking Destruction. You have The Rock. You have Chris Jericho. You have The Big Show. I have two guys in there that should have went over to the Alliance. Chris Jericho and Paul White. And yes, I understand they were WWE since 1999, and I get it. Whatever. But this, to me, was a failed opportunity. Not to mention the fact that during the match, you have Chris Jericho turn on The Rock and just leave. Yeah. Why the fuck not have Chris Jericho de facto over to the Alliance, when he should have. Here's a guy that was in ECW and WCW, and yes, I get it, that Stone Cold Steve Austin wrestled in both organizations as well, so I do understand why he was in the Alliance, I do. Yeah. But it was basically, let's have WWF versus WWF, because... <sighs> Like I said, you have Stone Cold Steve Austin, and you have Booker T, and you have Rob Van Dam, who are already in the WWF. I mean, Rob Van Dam fucking had a match or two in 1990 fucking seven. And yeah, Booker T came out, and you know, whatever. It just kind of, it's like, okay. And then Kurt Angle. What the fuck is Kurt Angle doing in the Alliance? Yeah. Seriously. It made little to no goddamn sense. You know, and so, I mean, yeah, this was a really good match, obviously. Okay. And like I said, it told a really good story. That's fine. Yeah. You know, you had guys in the ring that probably never touched before. Well, I mean, you had Undertaker and Kurt, and you have Kurt and, you know, Kane, and Austin and The Rock starting off, and you eventually have fucking Rob Van Dam and Chris Jericho. That was pretty cool. Yeah. And then, of course, Chris Jericho turns on The Rock, but that's fine, because apparently what happened was is that you have Kurt Angle turn on the Alliance, which was fucking ridiculous in my opinion. Mm. And then of course, WWF wins. And of course, you got Vince is in the aisle way and he's got his hands over his head and until he breaks both his quads and then he's like, yeah, yeah, won, we won, yay. And you know, and you know, we have people later on I watch videos after videos about them reviewing this match and this show. And they said it wouldn't have killed the WWF to change at that very moment. Whatever that means, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Like, I came home from school on Monday night just to turn on the guide to see if I was going to see Monday Night Raw or whatever mashed up fucking jumble it was. Right. 
Now, obviously, it was still WWF. But think about this. You still had the Dudleys. You still had Taz. No, Taz was already there. You still had Rhino. You still have Rob Van Dam. They all were there. You know, yes, WWF is the biggest organization. Or was the biggest organization at that time. Yeah. And WCW fucked themselves over royally. There was a shit show and that needed to die immediately. I see matches from WCW that make me want to wash my eyes out with soap after watching them because of how bad they were. And then you look at ECW that unfortunately went bankrupt for some reason or another. And it was almost like, I get it, you want to start over fresh. But the fact of the matter is, WWF was a big company that couldn't be stopped. And then, you look at a few months down the road, and yes, WWF, World Wrestling Federation, eventually became what it is now, World Wrestling Entertainment. And the rest is history. Yep. Yeah, I mean... Things that happened prior to Survivor Series and then after Survivor Series this year was quite, like the lead up, Matt said very eloquently, the lead up to Survivor Series 2001 was very, very good. Post Survivor Series, it was kind of, you know, wonky and weird and transitions and other things like that. One thing that, you know, I found probably just as entertaining as the match itself with the Survivor Series match. Winner take all, you got a camera in like each of the locker rooms for the Alliance and the Team WWF. And just the reactions of everybody as the matches are going on was... <laughs> <laughs> when Team WWF wins, the Alliance looked like they lost their best friend or something. It's Stephanie's reaction. Oh my god. Fucking hilarious. Oh, what's even better is the Raw after. Yeah. I mean, and this is the cool part because my mom, who's not a wrestling fan, but had to grow up. <laughs> With me and my brothers watching wrestling, and then her brothers watching wrestling when she was growing up. Yeah. And she is walking in on me watching when Stephanie is talking to Vince, going, I don't want to kill you, Daddy. I love you. Yeah, exactly. And she's going, What the hell is this shit? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, what the fuck is this shit? This is, I don't remember anything like this when I was a kid. Shut up, you watch all my children. So, anyway. Yeah. But, yeah, they got the Kiss My Ass Club, and then... Yeah, I mean, you knew that the WWF was not going to die. No. And for those people that say, well, it should have changed after Survivor Series. Vince is greedy. Okay. But you still have all those guys... Still have a job. Yeah. You know, yes, maybe it's not what they wanted, maybe, but they still did it. And then, you look at 2002, and those guys that we mentioned earlier in the video. NWO debuting at No Way Out. Yeah. Goldberg coming in at The Rock's Rock Show or whatever. Yeah. Swing along with The Rock or whatever the fuck. Rock concert or whatever the, rock, the fuck. Yeah. Or Rey Mysterio debuting on SmackDown. Yep. All of that finally came in. Yeah. And then you think it would have been so much better if it was in the Alliance. Yeah. But, I mean, hell, there's another name I forgot to mention in my little ramble there. Fucking Rey Mysterio on the Alliance team for this match. Oh, yeah. 
But, I mean, it's a good show. Like I said, you know, it wasn't terrible by any means. Although, you know, you do question a few things. Yeah. But, it was what it was. You know, needless to say, even when everything went, to, you know, went down the way it went down, if you look at the card as a whole, it was actually pretty good. It was. It really was. And I mean, it's cool to see champion versus champion. Mm -hmm. And I mean, Edge and Test. Yeah. To me, was pretty cool. I mean, it's just kind of like unfortunate that Andrew Martin was not as popular as he should have been because yeah. you look at a test and then you know his career fizzled out in WWF going over to TNA yeah. as the Punisher I guess and unfortunately it fizzled out there too well, yeah, he went, when he was in TNA, he went by his actual name, Andrew Martin. Yeah. And the phrase he would use is, try and see if you can pass the test. Kind of referring to yeah. his name back in WWF. It's like, okay, we'll see where he goes and how well he does. And it really wasn't, it was okay, but like, there was so much potential there. That could have been used, that just wasn't. Then, of course, we lost him at a very young age. Mm. Yeah. Fucking 33 years old. That Demons. is the biggest tragedy I can think of. And when you think about the word, when people say such a waste, yeah. Like. I know that people struggle with their demons, and I get that, but there just was so much potential, you know? And that's why if you have an addiction like that, it's, you have to get help. Yeah. Any way you can. And you know, since we're on the subject, it takes me back again to Dynamite on Wednesday, and CM Punk came out and he's like, there's a couple people I want to talk about that aren't here tonight. First of all, I want to talk about John Moxley. John Moxley, you know, he said, John's been going for quite some time and he's, you know, been going and going and going. Yeah. But he has decided to, you know, take himself off the hamster wheel and, you know, think about himself and kind of, you know, I think he's got some issues that he needs to deal with before he can continue on, which yeah. is, you know, very good on his part. Punk was even like, you know, it doesn't matter what you have, what issues you have, drugs, alcohol, whatever else, if you need the help, ask for it whether it be your family a friend close fr best friend a neighbor somebody you know that you can trust that you can get help for whatever you're going through get it so i thought that was pretty cool yeah so that's round two survivor series 2001 and i yeah. gotta say when I've said this in the past videos we've done about this year, it was probably one of the best years in WWF, in my opinion. Right. And, I mean, except for the obvious later part of it, but this was a very good year. And, you know, I'm sad that we're not talking about this anymore, but looking forward to it was like, yeah, we had a lot to say and we said it. Yeah. So. There it is. Yep. <laughs> uh, round three coming up. Mm -hmm. When we talk about Survivor Series 2011. Ten years later. Yeah. What Matt has said, I guess, is one of his, one of his 
personal favorite Survivor Series events. Yeah, it was fun, 2011. Oh, yeah. Dig it! Talk to you in a bit. Deuces. Yeah.